This week marked the 35th anniversary of the worst terror attack in Canadian history. On June 23, 1985, a bomb exploded on Air India Flight 182 off the Irish coast. The flight had left Toronto via Montreal en route to New Delhi. All 329 people on board lost their lives, including 280 Canadians and 86 children. Prosecutors argued that BC-based Sikh extremists had carried out the bombing as an act of revenge against the Indian government because the year before the Indian Army had led a deadly raid on Sikhism's holiest shrine. But only one man had ever been convicted in relation to the bombing, and he is now free. To talk about this anniversary, we've invited two guests. Sushil Gupta was 12 years old when he lost his mother, Ramwati, and Deepak Kandanwala was 17 when he lost his older sisters, Manju and Chandra. They both join us now. Thank you both for, for making time for us this evening. Thank you, Happy Natasha. Deepak, I'll begin with you. How did you mark um, the 35th anniversary, especially in light of physical distancing and everything that's happening right now? Well, typically the families would get together at one of the four memorials in Canada or in Ireland and have a chance to reflect on the anniversary together, but obviously that was not possible with COVID. Uh, so this year, uh, personally, I ended up going to the Toronto Memorial, which is at Humber Bay Park, and had a chance to reflect uh, on the 35 years uh, there. And then more broadly, for the families, what we've done is created a YouTube channel uh, under the title of Air India Memorial so that people can post uh, videos and um, uh, memories uh, on that channel and people can try to be together even though we're far apart. What about you, Sushil? Uh, well, Deepak's correct. Uh, uh, it was a challenge this year because of COVID. Uh, so we did create that YouTube channel uh, uh, for families as well as government officials, the Irish ambassador for one, for example, uh, British High Commissioner, a number of officials that supported messages. And I uh, took a moment to uh, attend the memorial uh, to greet those officials as well as spend some time with my children, uh, my two little girls, uh, uh, because it's important for them to know why their grandmother's not here today as well. You know, Sushil, I'm glad you brought up the issue of children because it occurs to me now, 35 years later, there are so many Canadians who would really have no direct personal connection, certainly no memory of what happened 35 years ago. So how is the memory, the story being kept alive so that people learn from what happened? Well, I think uh, one key way, for example, is uh, by the families themselves uh, organizing memorial services every year to remember our loved ones. It is also the uh, National Day of uh, Remembrance for Victims of Terrorism. Uh, so we take a moment to uh, remember them as well. Over the years as well, myself, my father and others have also, uh, uh, when Parliament, for example, is uh, holding, conducting hearings on issues from security to, to health well-being, PTSD, for example, uh, we ensure that we speak on, on, on behalf of the victims for the suffering that we've gone through. We, many of us have gone on to advocate on behalf of uh, victims of crime and victims of terrorism. So that's uh, one way I think we try to honor our loved ones. You know, I have to say from my own perspective, considering it was the 35th anniversary, there really wasn't that much coverage of the anniversary this year. And part of that might have to do with the fact that COVID-19 is the biggest story perhaps of our lifetimes and that there's so much political strife both in Canada and in the United States. So, so much coverage is going towards protests and events that are taking place. But um, Deepak, I wonder for you, was that hurtful or does it not matter if you yourself personally are marking the day? Uh, I think it is actually quite disappointing to see how little coverage there was this year to mark the 35th anniversary of Canada's largest mass murder. Uh, there were 280 Canadians, as you mentioned, uh, that lost their lives uh, in this incident. And, you know, just to give you an example, it was very disappointing, and I, I would almost say somewhat insulting, that both of Canada's national newspapers didn't have a single line on June 23rd about this event in, the, in their copies. Uh, and so that's kind of very, very sad and quite disappointing to see, even with the other activities that are happening around the world. Do you think that race plays at all a role in this? Well, I think that is unfortunately true. If you look at the way the government responded 35 years ago, uh, as you know, the Canadian Prime Minister at the time, Mulroney, didn't even uh, acknowledge the families. He sent condolences to the Indian Prime Minister. It took 20 years for a Canadian Prime Minister to actually meet with the families. 
And unfortunately, those type of things continue to happen. So I do think, unfortunately, uh, due to, you know, the color of the skin of the most of the Canadians, but they were Canadians, uh, we have not got the coverage uh, of this event that it really should have had. What do you think, Sushil? It, it, even 35 years later, is race still playing a role in the way the story gets covered or doesn't get covered? I don't know if it is uh, today. Uh, uh, well, certainly as recent as 10 years ago, Justice Major, former Supreme Court of Canada, Justice uh, uh, John Major, who presided over the inquiry, uh, certainly uh, indicated that he feels it may have been treated differently uh, 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 by the public, by by our government officials, if uh, it were an Air Canada plane or, or, or we weren't described as Canadians of East Indian uh, descent, as if we were some other category of uh, Canadians. Uh, but I do think it is important that Canadians do remember because uh, uh, as Deepak said it, these were Canadian citizens who were murdered uh, at the hands of terrorists who were cowardly, as, as, as all terrorists are. Um, but it's also important uh, so that Canadians remember terrorism is not something that just happens overseas. It happens here in Canada. We can't become complacent. Uh, 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 and that's the attitude I have and, and, and the families have uh, because we want to ensure people like my little girls and my kids and other, uh, other Canadians don't uh, hopefully don't become victims of terrorism themselves. Well, you've taken this on as a lifelong mission because losing your mother at such a young age, you, it sort of shaped where you were going to go with your life, with your career. We're showing pictures of your mother right now. Um, so talk to me about the career you've taken on and how you're trying to fight the issue of terrorism. Well, certainly uh, this this tragedy played a, a, a big impact in directing me on a path. and. Uh, that was to work within the justice system to be candid, uh, to hopefully make it better, to to ensure that the, the human voice is uh, uh, listened within that system. I became a federal prosecutor, uh, uh, then was in a judicial role for a number of years, and uh, most recently, I, uh, a few years ago, I joined the RCMP. Uh, and, and beyond that, I also work uh, tirelessly with uh, uh, a number of advocacy organizations that advocate on behalf of uh, victims of crime and victims of terrorism. Two that I'll mention is one is the uh, is, is called Invictim, the international network supporting victims of terrorism and mass violence. And uh, we're a collective of victim service NGOs around the world, uh, some of the leading uh, organizations around the world, and we share best practices. We work with our respective governments, police agencies, and so forth to look at training, look at uh, uh, best service delivery models, and so forth, uh, what legislation may be needed. Uh, the uh, Another is, uh, uh, you know, and this is something that I didn't create, but I was honored uh, to be asked to join is the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police a few years ago set up a uh, national working group on victims of terrorism. So they themselves wanted to engage victims and, and, and engage police leaders to see how their organizations can better serve and better assist uh, uh, victims of terrorism. So certainly this tragedy played a, a huge impact on my life and guided me down that path. Deepak, talk to me about losing your two sisters. They were both quite young. Manju was 19 and Chandra was 21 years old. How old were you at the time? We're showing pictures of your sisters 35 years ago. How old were you at the time and what impact did losing your siblings have? Well, I was 17 at the time and obviously that has a pretty dramatic impact. And as some people know, you know, I was supposed to be on that flight as well. So it's something you think about every day. Uh, it's something you have to deal with. Uh, but you try to take the energy from that and try to turn it into something positive. And you say, hey, look, there was two, 329 innocent people that were murdered that day. There was a significant amount of potential and ambition that was lost on that particular day. So can we, those of us that are still here, make sure that uh, we try to make the world a better place and make sure we can fulfill the ambition that uh, those 329 people did have. Uh, and I think that's kind of how I've tried to take uh, the reflection from, the, uh, from that day. You know, as I'm speaking to both of you, I, I can't help but think about the, the Ukrainian flight that was shot down by uh, the Iranian regime earlier this year. Many people lost their lives. Many Canadians lost their lives. And it's, it's a bizarre parallel that's taking place. So do you... Has that rekindled memories? Have, do you feel like, okay, now progress is being made, this stuff is taken more seriously? Or what, what's your read of that, um, uh, Sushil? Well, uh, I will say that uh, uh, professionally, uh, working within the RCMP, uh, 
I want to say our organization, the, the RCMP, did an admirable job. Uh, I was actually directly involved in uh, coordinating efforts on behalf of the RCMP to support uh, many of those uh, uh, Canadian victims uh, uh, who lost loved ones in uh, the uh, Ukraine Air PS752 tragedy. And, and I want to say that the organization has done an admirable job uh, uh, in providing the support, working with local uh, police across the country to provide victim support, for example, and working with our other government partners. It was uh, humbling. It was honor. I felt honored to work with those families uh, based on my experience. And uh, I, I want to say I felt a little, a little proud uh, be, uh, and happy and pleased uh, in that it was quite clear to me that uh, a number of the lessons learned from Air India are uh, proving uh, to have been learned by some of our, our, our government organizations. Deepak, we, we have less than a couple of minutes, but I'll give the last word to you. What is it all these years later that Canadians need to understand and keep in their memories as we move forward to the 40th, 45th, 50th anniversary of that tragic, tragic event? I think people have to remember that, one, this was a Canadian and international tragedy. It was some, It is Canada's largest mass murder. 280 Canadians lost their lives. There were innocent people. There was significant potential lost and ambition that was lost. We as Canadians need to do everything we can to try to prevent anything like this ever happening again. Uh, we know that terrorism does exist on our soils. It's not just international. This is an activity that we know is in Canada, and we have to remain vigilant, as uh, Sushil mentioned. And I think that's people need to remember that. People can't let their guards down. And we have to remember the lessons of what happened over the last 35 years and make Canada and the rest of the world a better place. Okay, we will leave it there. I want to thank you both so much for your time. It, I want to say I'm so sorry for your loss. The, the apology is coming 35 years later. But again, I'm very deeply sorry. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you so much, Sushil Gupta and Deepak Khandalwal, both joining us tonight.